Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I will show you how I do a lens effect, which is useful for any round and translucent object such as gems or scopes. Then I work on a glowing effect, formerly known as OSL or Objective Source Light. Here's the material list. The miniature I'm working on is an elemental minion from Myth the board game. The central plate has been base coated off camera with a single layer of scurvy green. So let's start. Here you can see the palette with the scurvy green, the light green and the white. And I'll begin by applying a thin glaze of scurvy green around the, the ring on the chest of the, the miniature. So this is to start building the, the glowing effect of light coming out of that power source of that power core. I'll start mixing now the, the, the scurvy green, the light green and a tiny bit of white to begin the, the lens effect. I'll apply that, that the lighter green version around the, the bottom part of the uh, of the circle and as you can see I'm trying to pull the pigments towards the bottom so usually when you whenever you take the brush off the, the surface this is where you're gonna have more pigments so you have to try to uh, pull them into the right place and keep them there until they dry and then we start building a lighter arc of, of green around that, that bottom part. I'm applying like a, a, a glaze of the, the base color to basically bind the, the, the two layers together. And now I'm going back to the lighter green with a, this time a little bit more white. And again, building up that effect with a little bit of stippling, which is basically just small dots in sequence. Uh, going back to the mid-tone, again stippling and trying to make the transition look better and, and more natural. And once again, another, another glaze of the, the base color to um, basically, again, bind all the all these layers together and smooth the transitions as, as much as I can. An even lighter version of the green now and start working uh, as close to the bottom as I can. You see one only sort of for the, the very bottom of the circle to be close to pure white. I'm going back to a mid-tone and stippling on the transition to make it look more natural. So here I start building the, the glowing area around that power source starting by the inner side of the ring. I'm using a slightly lighter version of the base color uh, there's no white for now just just cut a green and a little bit of the light green so I'm going around the ring giving it like a, a tint of the of that green and then I'll follow up by start glazing around the the areas where I want to to have that glowing effect As you can see, uh, I'm always pulling the brush towards the, the source of light because you want the, the the most pigments to be closer to the uh, to the source, and the further away you are, the least uh, the least pigments you're gonna have. Therefore, the the effect sort of fades away as as you move away from from the light. Also, this is not a, a wash, so avoid 
uh, letting the paint pull in the crevices use it the minimum amount that you can and if it pulls just a wiper brush and then clean it up with a dump brush so now I'm gonna work start working on the, the, the lighter lighter greens so this is where light would actually reflect and shine now you know see how this is usually uh, high areas or edges uh, they kind of have a tendency to be lighter closer to the white so going around the inner ring you like a with this almost pure white color going back to the to the green glaze working it up a little bit more and the closer to the source of light that you are the the brighter the reflections will be or the glowing effect will be so I'm working now on a slightly lighter green trying to pick up sort of the the you know the raised areas I'm gonna give it uh, the white, pure white dot effect that uh, is a key aspect of lens effects. So that what gives you the impression of, of being a sphere or a circular object. You know, like a smaller second dot, a pure light, smaller one this time. me quite a few tries because my, my brush was, was getting dry too fast so uh, eventually what I, I did was I used a dump brush uh, with a lot of water and a tiny bit of, of the white and tried to be as fast as I could between the palette and, and the actual mini I'm stippling pure white around the around the outer side of the ring to give it a more like a, a round effect, a round look. Basically to attenuate that that shape. And now I'm gonna again a little bit more stippling with pure white. Continuing with the pure white, I'm going to highlight the higher edges of the miniature, the, the, the places where light would pulse and have a brighter shine. Just going around that area and picking up like random, the random bits and parts and the so it's it's random, not really like a sort of a, not really an edge highlight effect per se. begin working on around the eyes now and the first thing I'm going to do is to mark the, the raised or the edges where you're going to have the brighter uh, lighter effect that'll be like around the eye socket and at the upper edge of that 
mouthpiece or face mask, whatever it is. Kind of like a sketch for now, I'm going to leave this another final effect. I'm going to go for the, the first glaze, the curvy green. Uh, continue pulling paint towards the light source, in this case it will be the, the eye. So it fades away the, the further the, it is from the light source. Since the forehead is a, a more even surface, I'm doing a little bit of feathering in here, which is with a dumb brush with no paint. Try to smooth the, the transitions. And now going back to the, to the base color, painted the, the eye socket. And now mixing a, a lighter green. Actually, I'm going back to the to the chest and, and, and brightening it up a little bit. And with glazes, you really want to let it dry before you apply uh, another coat on top, just to avoid messing up with the pigments. So now, with sort of the same tone, again pulling paint, pulling pigments towards the light source. Now back to the to the base color to again smooth the transitions and bind sort of all the layers together. I'm going to start highlighting the brighter areas on the face mask and the first thing I did was to put a dot of white in the eye itself since um, the idea is to, is to paint it as if the light was coming out of the eye therefore that's where you want uh, the highest color or the lightest color uh, now I'm glazing actually uh, highlighting the, the face mask with a not a pure white but a pretty light green and same around the Once again here I'm going for glazes of the base color 
to bind and, and smooth the transition between um, the lighter or the higher colors. bit of pure white and again I'm going for the extreme for the edge highlight almost from the, the eye socket And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.